Gossip Girl here, your one and only source into the scandalous lives of Manhattan's elite. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing fantastic. Fun fact, I just came out of a depressive episode and I was like, should I go to therapy? Should I get my meds up? Nope, we're filming a YouTube video. Let's do the move to the side now so you can see the screen. Before I begin, spoiler alert. We are going to be spoiling this shit out of this show. If you have not watched Gossip Girl in its entirety, get out of here, go watch it, and then come back. Go watch the six seasons. I know that sounds crazy. Serena Vanderwoodson obviously is a formidable character. She's hot, she's rich, she's tall as hell, she's beautiful, no problem getting men. That has never been an issue for her. <laughs> Although maybe I feel like it should have been because sometimes she just dives into shit blind. Mm, sometimes, all the time, she dives into shit blind. Baby girl, <laughs> it's not everyday men. Let's find some hobbies. Let's travel a bit more. Let's act actually go to class. Um, and one thing about Serena, she's gotta go. Chalk, chalk, I've gotta go. <laughs> Before we get into that, I would like to show you a cursed most media project that I made when I was 13 years old, when I was in high school. <laughs> Here we have a French man. Here we have Serena Vanderwoodson. I made this whole thing from scratch. If you look closely, you will see that it's absolute gar. <laughs> it's absolute garbage. However, we move. I was 13. Listen, it's the best I could do. So let's meet the man. Drum roll, please. Here we have Ms. Serena Vanderwoodson's boyfriend. First, she dates Daniel Humphreys. Woo, go Dan. She breaks up with Dan, and then she dates Dan again. <laughs> And then she breaks up with Dan again, and then she dates. Hey, Aaron, Aaron Rose. And then she breaks up with Aaron. Guess who she dates again? Daniel Humphreys. Yes, she goes back to Dan, breaks up with Dan, dates Gabriel, Carter, Trip, Nate, and then she breaks up with Nate, and then guess who she goes back to? Mr. Daniel Humphreys, yes, yes, yes. Breaks up with Dan, she dates Colin, breaks up with him, yeah, you guessed it, she dates Dan again, dates Ben, dates Max, breaks up with Max, dates Dan again, and then of course she dates Mr. Steven Spence. Breaks up with Steven, and guess who she goes back to? She goes back to Dan Humphreys. That is the chronological order in which Serena dated these men. However, that's not how we're going to be sort of taking them. I'm gonna go alphabetically. I'm gonna talk about these men, the relationships with Serena, and then at the end, I will give them a ranking out of 10, and we'll just keep going until we reach the last person in the alphabetical order. Does that make sense? I think it does. So obviously, Serena ends up with Dan at the end, but did Serena choose the right man? Well, stick with me to find out. Let's find out together. Let's go on this cute little journey, you and me. Let's get started. The first boy we are starting with, did I just say forced? The first boy we are starting with is Mr. Aaron Rose. You know when you look at somebody and they just have the most pompous fucking face? So we meet Aaron in season one when he is setting up an exhibition because he's like a tortured, he's like a tortured artist. Oh, people don't get me. Oh, I wear scarves and, and satchels and all I wear is fucking brown. Ugh. So towards the end of this episode that we meet him in, we realize that Serena and Aaron had actually met before. They went to this camp together and they actually got married and he gave her like a licorice ring or something cute I guess he asks her out they start dating and then we later find out that Aaron is actually he's dating other people while dating Serena they probably never had the exclusivity conversation but it looks like Serena kind of dates one man at a time unless she's she's cheating on them of course but she's used to exclusivity from the get-go it seems like so she is not happy about this she tries to call Aaron one time and a girl picks up and she's like this is Tamara, who's calling? And then she confronts Aaron and he's like, I could explain who Tamara is and why she was at my apartment last night. The fact is you either feel something here or you don't. Be nicer. What the fuck? Like she's obviously upset. Serena, this is your man? Is she gonna stick beside him too? Ugh, that's crazy. <laughs> I am very much against Serena committing to like men immediately. Like she doesn't know this man. He's obviously like not a very empathetic person. Serena thinks this is romantic. I cannot save a girl who doesn't want to be saved. Okay, so over the course of their little dating relationship thing, Serena finds out that Aaron is sober. He doesn't drink anymore. And for whatever reason, she's very embarrassed by her past. Cause you know, she used to be a party gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> 
or she used to be, so she doesn't tell Aaron about um, her past and all that, but stupid Dan goes and does it. Um, I actually don't remember whether it was on purpose or not. He does it regardless. Thankfully, Aaron doesn't care, 10 points to Aaron, and they continue their little thing. They continue on relationship bliss. But then Aaron's ex Lexi comes into town and she's talking to Aaron at Rufus's art gallery while looking at pictures that Aaron took of Serena. Lexi says, ha ha ha. This makes me wanna shop at The Gap and validate my self image with overpriced makeup. Girl, what in the pick me? Oh, she's not like other girls. Sorry, her family is worth a fucking billion dollars? Where's she supposed to go to Target to buy her makeup? Lexi, don't piss me off. You're on your last straw, Lexi. So Aaron doesn't defend her at all. The girl that's his muse, the girl that he's had a crush on since he was like, what, nine years old, doesn't defend her. While Lexi's saying all these things and making fun of Serena, Serena and Dan are walking into the gallery. So Serena overhears her making fun. She ignores it for the time being. And then when her and Aaron are alone, she's like, do you know what? That actually bothered me. It was really mean what she was saying. Aaron's like, oh, she was just protecting me. Your girlfriend is hurt, dude. She's hurt. Oh my God. Put your ex-girlfriend that you're still friends with in check. And then of course, due to the friend-cestuous nature of this show, Lexi shows some interest in Dan and I think they go on a date. <laughs> Anywho, maybe I shouldn't be as hard on Aaron as I am being right now because Serena is starting to get jealous of Lexi because she's seeing Dan. Girl, let's pick a man and let's stick to it, okay? So now I think Aaron's like, he can sense the chemistry between Dan and Serena. It's either on the episode or the episode after. Serena's stepfather dies and Aaron's like, <clears throat> come to Buenos Aires with me. Let's go on a little vacay, huh? Aaron guilt trips her into going to Buenos Aires. I don't know how to say that, Buenos Aires. And then when she's on the plane, literally three hours into like a, what, 15 hour plane ride, she breaks up with him. Cause she's like, this is ridiculous. I want to be with Dan. So this breakup happens off screen and golly, am I thankful for that. I will say I do love Gossip Girl's ability to just make characters disappear. This dude is literally Serena's best friend's stepbrother and we never see him again. Oh. I love to see it. I really do. What is Aaron's ranking out of 10, you ask? Drum roll, please. God, my Wi Fi is really bad. <laughs> I hope you can see that. He is number seven. Let's move on. I hate this man down. I hate this man down. <laughs> so we meet Ben Donovan in season four. He's in jail and he's on the phone with his half sister, Juliet, and they're plotting Serena's demise. <laughs> We're off to a really, really good start, obviously. Ben and Juliet, they're literally plotting to take down Serena, turn all her friends against her. They want her to be kicked out of Columbia, which is the university she's going to. They want to destroy all her friendships. Juliet starts dating Nate so she can get like close to Serena and ruin her life like a lot easier. Ben is literally whoring his sister out from jail so that he can get back at this, what is she like 18, 19 at this point? Let's seek employment. I know you can't cause you're in jail, but like, let's find a hobby. Let's find God. They have a prison counselor. I'm assuming let's do literally anything else but this. One of the things that I dislike the most about this character is the fact that he's supposed to be this like scary, domineering man that's in jail and he's getting people beat up. He literally gets Nate's dad beat up. And then I look at this man's face and I'm like, he did not do this. Y'all could have gotten a scarier looking man. I'm so sorry. I could break him in half. He has the structural integrity of a twig. This man is not scary. Anywho, that's just, that's just my opinion. Juliet ends up drugging Serena, which is insane. And as a result, Re Re Regina, wrong it girl, baby. She used to be a party animal. She ends up thinking, oh, this is her fault. Not that she got drugged by like another 18 year old girl. Crazy, crazy, crazy. The amount of drugging plots in this show is frankly insane. We find out about Serena and Ben's backstory eventually. Back in the day when Serena was like 15, 16 and she had run away from Manhattan, she went to boarding school and Ben was one of her tutors and slowly but surely they start catching feelings for one another. It's really gross. Obviously Serena's like 15, there's this cute authority figure that she likes, which is like normal. She's a teenager. Ben is catching feelings for her. They make it very obvious, but we're supposed to see him as the good guy because he didn't act on it. Babe, tell her to find another tutor. 
Seek therapy as to why you're attracted to a 15, 16 year old, perhaps. There's so many things, so many other things he could have done. So Serena's still in the school. Her and Ben drive to this fair. Why are you alone with a 15 year old that you have feelings for? I don't know. They drive to a fair and they start to drive back to the school. Their car breaks down. Anyways, they have to stay at a motel. <laughs> And Serena, she wants to do the nasty with this man. And Ben's like, no, no. We're not exactly sure why at this point, but Ben gets sent to prison for a statutory R word. So yeah, now we find out that this is the reason that Ben hates her so much. It's because he thinks that she lied about statutory R word. So Serena and the gang finally find out that the reason Ben went to jail was because Lily, Serena's mom, she had overheard some girls talking about Serena and Ben, sort of having feelings for each other. It was just gossiping. So Lily, and instead of consulting her daughter about it, instead of talking to her daughter, she literally just gets him sent to prison. And that's fucking insane. I love that woman down, but she like needs to learn to communicate with her children. This is wild. <laughs> Obviously, Serena had nothing to do with it. Lily, she forged her daughter's signature on an affidavit. So Serena is now on a mission to get Ben out of prison. Lily gets him released, I believe. Anyways, he gets out. Serena's happy. <sighs> Serena's happy now, and she actually gets Rufus to let him stay at the loft. This motherfucker is going to be at the loft. At this stage, I don't think, oh, this is so insane. Let me not, well, let's not, I could go way deeper, but let's not, this is supposed to be fun. So we eventually find out that there was a witness that testified in Ben's case against him, and that was Damien Dalgard, the uh, funky drug dealer in town. <laughs> when Ben gets out of prison, he does what any sane, stable man in their 20s, 30s would do. He threatens Damien Dalgard and he tells him to stay away from Serena. Because at this point, Damien's kind of like around. He's like around Manhattan at this point. We're seeing him quite a lot. He's just like entwined in the plot at this moment. So yeah, Ben's like, stay away from her. The sun is setting right now. I'm so sorry. Damien is a drug dealer. This isn't good for him. He doesn't like being threatened. So Damien, Dan, and Eric, Lil VDW, they team up and they make it look like Ben punched Damien. And it's at a party, so a bit of chaos ensues. The police end up being called and Ben gets sent to jail because he's violating his parole. However, he doesn't stay there for long because Dan feels bad that they lied about the whole thing and he's released. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that man in prison, I'm so sorry. Leave him where he belongs, in jail. I'm sick of him. Fun fact, actually really, really sad fact. Him and Starina start dating. What the hell? I literally hate the fact that they eventually start dating because like he quite literally groomed her. He met her when she was like 15. He's not a groomer, he's just a loser. Listen, you can take the man out of prison, but you can't take prison out of the man. I'm gonna repeat myself, get a job. Stay away from her. So now Ben's out of prison. He tells Serena that he's back to tutoring. He's not actually back to tutoring. He works as a food and beverage attendant. So at this point in time, Damien threatens Ben. Lily gets involved and she solves the issue. And then Ben threatens Damien. And Serena realizes this, finally sees him for the loser he is. And she breaks up with him. Thankfully, that is the last that we see of Benjamin Donovan. So let's move on to the ranking. He is boyfriend nine out of 10. He is one of the worst men that Serena has dated, but there's worse. This girl has been through it. The shit that these men have put Serena through, it's just, it's disgusting, frankly. Who we got next? We have Carter Bazin, the Winter Soldier. So Carter Bazin is played by Sebastian Stan. We actually meet Carter in the first season of Gossip Girl. He manages to scam Nate out of $10,000 during a poker game. So in one of the later episodes, Cece, Serena's grandmother, she tries to set Carter up with Serena because she thinks he's just the fucking best. She thinks he's one of New York's most eligible bachelors. She really thinks that she just bagged Serena a baddie. She also tries to set them up because she really hates Dan. It's actually really, really funny. Cece succeeds because even though Serena and Dan, they're dating, they're boyfriend and girlfriend at this point, she ends up going to Cotillion with Carter. So as a result, obviously Dan gets a little bit jealous and then they realize that Cece kind of plotted this whole thing. She called him, she planned it. So Serena would end up going to Cotillion with Carter instead of Dan. And then we also find out that something happened with Carter and Serena in Santorini. They were in Santorini for a little bit. She runs away without telling him. She goes back to Manhattan and that's the last time that Carter sees her, literally until this whole Cotillion debacle. So not much happens after this because obviously Dan and Serena are still dating. Carter kind of fades into Gossip Girl obscurity for a little while. We run into Carter again in the next season where Chuck is at a restaurant and he passes 
Carter and this girl he knows named Elle, only she's going by a different name. And obviously we know that Carter's a bit of a dodgy character. So Chuck wants to get her out of the situation and Elle just gets freaked out by the whole situation. So she escapes the restaurant through the kitchen. So Chuck manages to get back in contact with Elle. They meet up, this isn't about Chuck and Elle. We'll just quickly touch on this. They meet up, Elle's like, they keep chasing me cause this secret society that Carter's part of, they need something from me. They're trying to kidnap me, whatever. <laughs> This is so fucking stupid. In order to help Elle escape, Chuck's like, one of my contacts can get us across the border. We can find somewhere safe. I've got the money I can get you set up. And his contact to get them across the border is Carter. What the f- Oh my God, you know he didn't pay attention in school. Why would you take her back to Carter? Carter's like, yeah, I can get her across the border. Don't you worry. So Chuck lets her get in a car with Carter and then the driver zooms away while Carter shows Chuck that he has this little caress tattoo thing on his arm, which shows that he was part of that secret organization. So obviously Chuck didn't know, but like, I feel like he could have deduced that from the situation. Anywho, so thankfully they never really wanted to kidnap her. They just made her sign an NDA because they do some dodgy shit in that club he's part of apparently. They made her sign an NDA and they gave her a shit ton of money so she could leave. And then she goes back to Chuck and she's like, I, I never liked you, I just wanted you for the money. And Chuck had caught feelings for her at this time. And honestly, good for her. She's really a girl boss. That's actually kind of incredible. She got so much money and she gets to like leave. She didn't die, no one hurt her. She just gets to leave and I love that for her. At this point, Chuck, realizes that he gave his heart to the wrong person. Who do you think is the right person that comes to- Hello, buddy. Hi. Say hi, bud. So the right person is Blair. So he goes back to Blair's apartment to wait for her. I think he has flowers. And we cut to Blair having a meltdown at a bar because she feels like, sorry, there's a hair on my face. So yeah, we cut to Blair having a meltdown at a bar. And who do we see enter the bar? Carter and the episode ends, but not before it is insinuated that they hook up. The amount of men in the show that have gotten with both Blair and Serena kind of blows my mind a little bit. What happened to girl code? Not even just that, the amount of men who choose to willingly go for Blair and Serena, like they're not a package deal, baby. It's not a two for one. Literally go find somebody, anybody else. I'm sure New York is a massive, massive city. Go find anybody else, please. It can't be that hard. So now Carter and Blair are hooking up. Chuck enters her apartment one day and little Miss Waldorf is sitting in lingerie and he's like, oh. And of course Carter comes out from behind her, plants a kiss on her cheek. So yeah, Blair's literally on this insane bad girl bender because her life is in shambles and she couldn't handle it. So both Chuck and Serena can see that Carter is just not good for her. He's bringing out the worst in her. So they kind of join forces and so they threaten Carter and Serena's like, oh, if you don't leave Blair alone, I'll spill the beans about Santorini. Which in retrospect, if you know what actually happened in Santorini, that shouldn't have been a threat. So yeah, Chuck and Serena kind of threaten him to leave town and he does, he goes to Dubai allegedly. So we don't see Carter again up until the last episode of season two, Goodbye Gossip Girl. When Carter shows back up in this episode, he pulls up to Serena and we find out what they were up to in Santorini. It turns out they were on a hunt to find Serena's father who she hasn't seen in years and years at this point. He tells her, I've found your father. She gets into his limo and they jet off to find Mr. Vanderwoodson. My issue with this character is that they give him such incredible redeeming qualities, like sort of selflessly helping Serena find her father, but they also give him some horrendous qualities, some of which we'll get into later. But like, why do you hook up with her best friend when she was clearly having a crisis? Like that's such an insane thing to do. Also, it was very evident that one of the reasons Carter was hooking up with Blair was so he could piss off Chuck. Plus the fact that he was part of that dodgy club that does so much insane shit that they have to make women sign NDAs and give them huge amounts of hush money. Like why'd they write his character like this? So that was the end of season two. Beginning of season three, we find out that Serena and Carter had- Oh buddy, you're gonna have to- Oh buddy, no. <laughs> this motherfucker wants to sleep. He just wants to take a little nap. Babes, I'm filming. Like, girl, uh, okay, I guess. Like, So we find out that Serena has been doing a lot of unhinged shit so that she can get in the press and get her dad's attention. Tension. So she runs into Carter and Carter's like, you can't keep avoiding me. And Serena's like, are you sure about that? She unties her halter top and pretends that she had a nip slip and she, there's paparazzi all around her and she uses them as a crowd to like escape from Carter. Dramatic, 
Babes, he wasn't holding you hostage. You could have walked away. He didn't have you in a cha in chains. Yeah, she's always got to do the most. That's okay. So it's very evident at this point that Serena does not want to be around Carter for one reason or another. She tells Dan that we were traveling together and now he won't stay away from me. So Dan enlists the help of Blair and Blair gets a restraining order against Carter. And because Serena and Blair are like joint at the hip, it forces Carter to stay away from Serena. Kind of a huge brain plot, massive brain. Blair is so smart. So at this fancy event with horses and shit, Carter tells Dan and Blair, this isn't true, I'm not stalking Serena. So they go find Serena and they confront her. What does this dr drama queen do? She steals a horse from, I think it's a polo match, and she just gallops away in her orange dress. Iconic scene, by the way. And Carter steals a stallion and he follows right after. Serena and Carter end up in the woods and they finally discuss the conversation that Serena has been avoiding all this time. We find out that Serena's dad actually didn't want to see her when they found him. It's actually really, really fucking sad. And it seems like to sort of avoid talking about it all, she boinks him, they boink in the woods. And by the time they're finished, Serena is gone. She She's disappeared, she's nowhere to be found. So then in a later episode, Serena is staying with Chuck because she's no longer going to Columbia. Um, and she doesn't want anybody to find out. It's kind of a secret at this point. And Serena accidentally fucks up one of Chuck's business meetings and then he gets mad and then she gets even madder that he's mad. So then she calls Carter, who she's not really interested in at this point, it seems. She calls Carter and they crash another one of Chuck's business meetings because she's mad. And then Carter slowly but surely realizes that Serena wasn't actually interested in going on a date with him she just wanted to use him to cause havoc and piss chuck off and carter's now pissed but let me ask this didn't you do the exact same thing to blair last season use her to piss chuck off and now you're mad because serena's doing it to you boohoo babes boohoo carter gets so pissed off he tells serena and i quote and now you're acting out because daddy doesn't love you why would you say that you have been on this journey with her trying to find her dad. We find out her dad doesn't want to see her and you're gonna... That's so cruel, so cruel. Serena seems to have a kink. We don't kink shame here, but she seems to have like a degradation. <laughs> She just seems to like it when men scold her unfairly. So she and Carter actually like start dating again after he says this horrendous thing to her. I understand that like the instability of the relationships in this show make it more interesting, but like, can I just have like a crumb? Just a little, little, little crumb of stability. Just one stable, normal relationship that doesn't involve drugging and cheating and stealing like thousands and hundreds and thousands and millions of dollars. Is it possible? Well, no, it's not because the show ended in 2012. Serena and Carter officially start dating, which I find so crazy because you literally plotted with Chuck to get him away from your best friend because you knew that he was bad for her and now you're dating him. Babes, I, I want Serena to donate her brain to science. So Carter and Serena officially start dating and at one point they run into this girl who says that she dated Carter, but he doesn't recognize her. And then they go to Carter's hotel and I think he's about to check out and they give him this giant bill. And he's like, I didn't, I didn't rack up this bill. And as a result, his card declines. And it's unfortunate that they don't take face card cause man, he got millions and billions and gajillion dollars worth on this face card right here. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so it's very obvious that Serena's now starting to get the ick. We actually find out that Carter's in the clear because Chuck and Blair teamed up. They did this whole thing, they planned this whole thing, including with the girl that he didn't know earlier and the hotel and the racking up of the bill. So Serena asks why they were sabotaging Carter and they're like, well, after the whole Carter Blair thing, they banished him to Dubai and he wasn't supposed to come back and they think he only came back because he ran out of money. But we know that that's not what happened because according to Carter, he wasn't in Dubai, he was out there looking for Serena's dad and he only came back, remember, at the end of the second season so that he could take Serena to him. So obviously Serena and Carter kiss and make up and then one day he runs into Brie Buckley and she says, Carter, you will pay for what you did to my family. And the Buckleys are this sort of powerful political family. The Buckleys and the Vanderbilts 
hate each other. They do not like each other. Funnily enough, Bree's literally dating Nate. But anyways, Blair and Serena at this point, they really believe that Carter is a changed man and he really, really cares for Serena. But Chuck doesn't buy it, so he investigates a little bit. Chuck finds out what exactly it is that Carter did to the Buckley family. He confronts Carter and he's like, you either tell Serena what you did to the Buckleys or you can leave town with this plane ticket that I bought for you. Why did he buy him a ticket? I don't, it's just what billionaires do, I guess. So Carter actually does decide to tell Serena what happened. We find out that he was dating and was about to get married to Brie Buckley's cousin, Beth Buckley. But when it came down to being at the altar, he left her. He ran away. And we find out that he did this because he never actually loved her. He is a gambling addict or was a gambling addict at this point. He was only gonna marry her because he knew that the Buckley family would pay off his debts. And apparently it's like a lot of debt because Serena says, oh, it'll take him at least 20 years to work that off. Are you kidding me? What is he, 21? Straight to gambling, huh? So after they have this conversation, Carter runs into the Buckley brothers, Beth's brothers, and they kidnap him. And it seems like the Buckley family wants to send him off to one of their oil rigs so that he can work off his debts. But Nate realizes that the Buckley brothers are hosting this poker game. So this poker game is very, very high stakes. Nate is like, let me join if I win I'm gonna need that back the brothers I think his name's PJ PJ Buckley he's like girl no the only reason PJ ends up agreeing to this is because Nate throws an incriminating photo of his cousin Trip Vanderbilt remember the Vanderbilts and the Buckley's very 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 powerful families and they both hate each other and Trip is on this political campaign because he wants to get into Congress it would be a really really horrible photo for his campaign so they let him participate in the game. For some reason, Serena plays in this poker game, like high stakes poker game. She's really, really fucking bad at poker. PJ ends up winning, so he keeps Carter and he keeps a photo of Trip. <laughs> However, it turns out that everything was a ploy. The photo of Trip was fake and they did this whole thing so that the Buckleys could release this photo, try to sabotage Trip's political campaign, but then the Vanderbilts would just be like, actually this photo is fake and then the Buckleys would look horrendous in the press. The thing is, Serena didn't know this. She didn't know that this was Nate's plan. When she finds out, she calls PJ, tells him about the plan so that it stops the Buckleys from releasing the photo and because they're grateful, they end up releasing Carter. Whoa, this is so stupid. So now Carter is released and Serena tells Carter what she did to get him released and Carter's pissed because he feels emasculated. He tells her, I'd rather you hate me than feel sorry for me. Loser, loser behavior, I'm so sorry. What? She just saved your life, baby. Say thank you. What happened to thank you? What happened to thanks? This is the last we see of Carter for a little, little bit. Serena and Nate start dating. Carter comes back into town because he is helping Serena find her dad again. But Nate thinks that he has ulterior motives. Cautious of Serena's feelings and because he's a little bit jealous, he tells Serena his suspicions. And he also tells Serena that she should probably stop hanging out with Carter because he's bad news and we already know that. And obviously she has no reason to doubt him at this point because Carter has been helping her for like probably years to find her dad. So obviously Serena finds this behavior a little bit controlling and now Nate and Serena are on the rocks. Just like Dorota wanted her drink in the last episode of Gossip Girl, Vodka on the Rocks. Yeah, 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 if you know, you know. Eventually Serena does find out that Carter was just using, I found your dad, let us let me help you find your dad, to get closer to her at this stage. She realizes that he's lying, then she kicks Carter out of the car, and Carter takes a one-way ticket into Gossip Girl Obscura. We never see him again. Bye-bye, Carter Basin. Bye bye, Carter Amazing. So, what is the ranking for Carter, you ask? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Number three. And that is saying something, because this man was a menace, yet I put him at number three, and there's reasons for that. Because there were a lot, there were a lot worser men. A lot worser. So, yeah. Carter's number three. On to the next. This man is fine. This is Colin Forrester. Face card goes crazy. He is a professor and he's cousins with two weirdos. He is the cousin of Ben Donovan and obviously that means he's also the cousin of Juliet. Only difference is Colin is normal. He's a normal human being. Oh, 
relatively. Let's get into it. Colin is a well-renowned businessman, professor, author, with a face card that simply does not decline. What can I say? What can I say? How good would we look together? I'm sorry. So we meet Colin in kind of like a meet cute situation because him and Serena, they live in the same building and they always happen to get downstairs at around the same time, at exactly the same time. They end up bickering, fighting over a taxi. I did say it was a meet cute situation, but it's really not because he's kind of an asshole and he always has a different woman that he puts into the taxis, stealing Serena's taxis a lot of the time. But listen, he's handsome and he admits to her that he leaves at around the same time every morning just so that he can run into her and they can have this little tussle every morning and for some reason that charms her I do find it a little bit problematic that this man who's like at least in his late late 20s he looks to be like in his 30s he is like actively pursuing a 19 year old you know she's an adult but still she's a teen age or 19 but obviously in the context of the show this isn't an issue so we are not going to talk too much about that fortunately colin is one of serena's better boyfriends in the context of the menaces she's dated so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna give this man a little bit of grace a little bit of grace also like i do be dating men in their 50s so what what can i i mean i'm 26 which is a lot different from 19 but what can i really say it's not me they end up having sort of a little date at a bar and end up having some quite like nice conversation this is so funny because ben a man that she hasn't dated yet is actively plotting her demise while she's getting to know this beautiful beautiful man like that's crazy. So, in the next episode, we realize that Colin is Serena's professor. For once, she does a smart thing. She says, we have to be professional about this. I'm serious about my grades. We cannot see each other. Also, at this university, student-teacher relationships are forbidden. Colin doesn't care for whatever reason. He convinces Serena to drop his class so that they can get together. This bitch falls immediately. She's like, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> For a man she j just met. That's, oh, Serena, I want better for my sisters. I want better for my sisters. At one point, Lily finds out that Serena is dating an older man for the upteenth time and uses reverse psychology that she actually learned from one of Colin, the authors, she learned from his book. And she uses that reverse psychology against Serena. Um, so Serena does end up breaking up with Colin. This is actually the point that we find out that Colin and Juliet are cousins, and he's been financially supporting her, paying for her apartment, paying her school fees, whatever, whatever. Which makes sense. She has so much time to ruin Serena's life because she's unemployed. The world makes sense again. Yeah, I was like, who has the time? She, she has the time. She ain't got a job. <laughs> At the end of the episode, we realized that Colin has actually been really positively influenced by Serena. He's up late and he's planning to make his classes a lot more interesting so Serena can actually gain something from it so that she can be more engaged in the class instead of focusing on him and so other students can be more engaged as well he's speaking with serena and they're like you know what we can make this work the class is only seven more weeks and then we can start dating so they plan to hold off for a little while hmm, wonder how well that's gonna go in the next episode they are constantly alone together in rooms so at this point we know that juliet is actively trying to ruin serena's life so once she finds out that serena is dating somebody she tries to sabotage it and juliet is not yet yet aware that this is who Serena's dating. But she does know that it is a professor, so this shouldn't be too hard for her to sabotage. At this point, Colin also finds out that his little cousin Juliet has been seeing their estranged brother who is in prison, so Ben. And he warns her, if you continue to see Ben, I will cut you off. But she puts a camera in his office. She bugs his office. Dun, dun, dun. She catches Serena and Colin making out. Y'all were supposed to be waiting. You were supposed to be waiting. What happened, guys? What happened and they've kind of given up the waiting thing at this point so they start planning their first trip together and Serena's talking to Dan Dan gets in her head and he's like you know if he really liked you that much he'd be willing to sacrifice he's not sacrificing anything he should be able to sacrifice something for you the master manipulator that Dan is I'm not gonna give him his lashings yet that's coming up next he successfully manages to get in their head and then Serena goes to Colin and she's like we're at two different places I think we should break up so they break up so then Vanessa busybody Abram she breaks into Juliet's apartment she looks on Juliet's laptop and she finds the footage of Serena and Colin making out and she's like I'm sitting on a bad boy piece of information 
Do you understand? So then she waits for Juliet to get home and she's like sitting in her chair. Like Juliet can't literally call the police for breaking and entering. So when Juliet comes into her apartment and she starts like the little tip with Vanessa, she tells Vanessa that like, I'm not gonna use that footage. I'm gonna delete it. I'm not interested in taking Serena down anymore. And then Vanessa leaves, but we see that before she does, she takes the memory card unbeknownst to Juliet. So Colin finally realizes if I wanna be with this girl, I do have to sacrifice something. He quits his job and him and Serena are finally able to get back together. Alrighty, so yesterday my camera ran out of battery, so we are here the next day and we're better than ever. So let's just get right back into it. I'm still stuck on the fact that she broke into our apartment and waited for her to come home. That girl was really jobless, hobbyless, manless, friendless, babes go to, go to something else. So we're now at this event where Colin's being honored, his peers are there, the dean's there, Serena's there as well. She looks gorgeous in this dress and they kind of like finally come out to the public. They kiss in public. Juliet finally convinces Vanessa to come back to the dark side, come back to team. I hate Serena and she's so easily convinced. This girl is just, she is not very smart. That's okay. So then they go to the dean and they try to tell her about the footage, but Blair stops them in their tracks because she takes the fall for Serena. She's like, actually, it was me in the footage that was making out with the professor. It wasn't Serena, it was Blair. What's she gonna do? And obviously Blair isn't in his class, so it's not as big a deal, which... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> so because of that, the Dean lets it go because Blair is not a troublemaker and also Colin had already quit. So Vanessa and Juliet walk away looking a fool as usual. <laughs> so Colin's actually there during the whole thing. He heard that Juliet had bugged his office. He finally cuts her off. And after the whole debacle, Serena ends up breaking things off with Colin and she jumps right back into Dan's arms, like right, like literally the next scene she's calling Dan. So yeah, that is it for Colin Forrester's story. He's most definitely one of my favorite of Serena's boyfriends, even though he was way older, which, mm, whatever. So, what is Colin's ranking, you ask? Well, he is a 2 out of 10. Serena's second best boyfriend, in my humble opinion. Next person that we have is good old Dan Humphreys. The man, the myth, the legend. He loves to yap. He can't make his mind up and he is very pretentious, similar to the likes of Aaron Rose. <laughs> Daniel Randolph Humphrey, where do I begin with this man? Where do I begin with this curly headed heathen? So we meet Dan and Serena, obviously in the first episode of the first season. He sees her coming back to Manhattan at the Grand Central Station. You can see in his eyes that he is obsessed with this girl. So they talk to each other, sparks fly, and they end up setting a date and while the date is good they agree that they're just not meant to be because their worlds are too different that is the one common theme that keeps occurring throughout the six season run of gossip girl they always break up because their worlds are too different so they finally start talking again and they go on their first proper date Dan plans this extravagant thing there's a limo he can see that Serena is a little bit like where's my Vespa <laughs> she likes to ride on Vespa she's she's a bit different so Dan sees that she's not particularly enjoying the date. So then they end up going to a bar and playing pool and uh, they start going pretty strong. So Dan and Serena, should we call them Darina? Saran? Let's call them Darina. So Darina is back and going strong. And then Dan's childhood best friend, Vanessa, is introduced into the picture and she starts taking up a lot of Dan's time. She gets a little bit jelly. She's, she gets a little bit jealous, which fair enough. So because of this, Darina gets in a little bit of a rough patch, but they communicate, which is so good. No one in this show ever communicates. This show is just friendcest and miscommunication and like billions of dollars. When the creators are making Gossip Girl, they just put a bunch of phrases in a hat and those are the three that, <laughs> that they picked up. So yeah, they communicate and Serena and Vanessa even become friendly. So then we meet Cece, Serena's grandmother. Obviously, Cece doesn't like Dan. She prefers Carter and she gets them to go to the cotillion together, Carter and Serena. It does cause a rough patch in Dan and Serena's relationship, but like I said earlier, they get back together and they're they're going strong that is until Georgina comes into town Georgina is one of the best characters created in the Gossip Girl universe she is so iconic and I can't believe that she was in the new series the new Gossip Girl reboot and they still managed to fuck it up like that's so annoying so Georgina comes back into town and she the girl is caught
causing havoc. She makes Serena go back to her insane party girl ways. Um, she literally drugs Serena. The amount of drugging plots in this television show is fucking insane. <laughs> the way they like trivialize drugging people. The fact that she was a party animal back in the day, like this is a recurring theme in a lot of her relationships. She's very insecure about this and what this girl needs is therapy to get past it. Anywho, Serena literally lies to Dan, tells him that she was cheating on him so he doesn't find out that she had regressed into her, you know, blackout drunk partying days. Not only that, but Serena and Georgina were partying with this one guy. He dies of a drug overdose. Georgina's the only person that witnesses so she is using this to blackmail Serena so that's one of the other things that she doesn't want Dan to find out obviously Dan and Serena break up Georgina is lying to Dan about who she really is and they actually end up kissing her and Dan make out so Serena ends up telling everybody the truth and Dan and Blair get Georgina banished to Bible camp and you know he wants to get back with Serena but unfortunately Dorina does not survive this because once again the worlds are just too different so that's it for Dorina season one in season Season two, we find out that Dan had spent the summer going from girl to girl, trying to forget his long-legged blonde bombshell. But he's like, no, I wanna get her back. I need Serena. So he goes to the Hamptons to find her, not before he runs into Cece though. And Cece finally gives him her approval, which is amazing. So Dan ends up finding her at the vitamin and water white party, an all white party. Terry Crews must have lost his invite and they hook up. Then they also hook up in this fucking bus bathroom i know that shit stink i know that there was green <laughs> green goop and gas seeping through that toilet door and burned everybody's eyelashes off <laughs> in a bus a bus nah. anyways they end up getting back together and then they break up only an episode later because guess why the worlds are too different why you really think about it no they're not dan is not some poor it impoverished man rufus's estimated net worth is one to two million dollars and they live in that huge loft in brooklyn they're literally in the same tax bracket the vanderwoodsons probably pay less taxes than rufus does cut the bullshit Ugh. so the vanderwoodsons net worth is estimated to be one to two billion which is a thousand millions and i know that's a massive difference but one to two million is a lot of freaking money your upper middle class you cannot trick me yes i know the humphreys had to be poor for the sake of the plot but it had to be mentioned so yeah they break up and they do avoid each other for a while but their feelings eventually settle and they go back to being friends again and that is when mr aaron rose enters the picture serena and aaron end up breaking up she goes right back into the arms of dan humphreys so then dan and serena get back together for the third time and we're only in season two which is crazy but anyways rufus all of a sudden disapproves of this relationship and we find out that it's because him and Lily so Dan's dad and Serena's mom they had a child together so yeah not only did their parents used to date now there's a whole half sibling in the mix at that point to throw the whole relationship away is that controversial to say so yeah despite this Dan and Serena are still going strong which is so strange because wouldn't that give you the most insane ick does that not make you uncomfy Y'all want a shared sibling at your wedding? <laughs> which, Scott wasn't at their wedding at the end of it, which is a little weird. Anyways, there's a good chance that Dan and Serena's kids will end up just looking like Scott, and that is what nightmares are made of, so I'm gonna stop talking about it. <laughs> we are now towards the end of high school, and Dan and Serena realize that they wanna go to different universities, and this causes a huge rift in their relationship, primarily due to miscommunication. Ugh, this miscommunication trope is so frustrating, but TBH, it makes a good show, I can't even lie. So then Blair Hayes is one of Dan's new teachers, Rachel, who he actually really gets along with. The school finds out and Blair gets a detention. And then she spreads a rumor that Dan and his teacher Rachel are in an inappropriate relationship. As a result of that, Dan and Serena break up. Rachel gets fired and she hooks up with Dan. Yet another wildly inappropriate age gap relationship. How about Bumble? How about Hinge? How about we try dating people our age? I'm so sorry. How about we how about we try dating people our age? I'm so uncomfortable right now. So due to a series of unfortunate events, Lily gets Serena sent to jail. 
Dan eventually does break her out. They're friends again. They finally graduate high school. Yeah, that's how the second season ends. So at the beginning of season three, Dan comes back from spending the holidays with his family at the Hamptons and he starts dating Hilary Duff. Her character is named Olivia and she's a cutest. She has such a cute, beautiful face. Equal parts cute, equal parts beautiful. I love looking at her face. <laughs> so Georgina's pissed, Vanessa's unemployed, and they both try to get Olivia and Dan to break up. It's so messy because this is when Dan and Serena find out that they have a shared sibling and he's still alive because yeah, they knew before, but everybody thought he was dead because that's what his adoptive parents said. So now they find out that he's alive. <laughs> so at this point, Dan and Olivia are, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, they're still going strong, but Olivia his publicist wants her to start a PR relationship with her ex named Patrick, who she met filming one of her previous movies. Dan, stupid ass, he goes and watches some of these previous movies and watches their sex scenes, and this makes him uncomfortable. So he's a little, he's a little jelly. But Olivia eventually reveals her relationship to the public. She goes on Jimmy Fallon, she talks about him. As a result of a story she tells him, Dan is dubbed bathroom boy, which I think is so fucking hilarious. But then Olivia gets offered a sequel to one of the films she did before and it's Oh, you know, it's a really good deal. Her parents are calling her, her managers are calling her. They really want her to do this film. So Dan and Vanessa, in an attempt to get her to stay, they start a bucket list of things that every college student needs to do. I think it was like 15 things or something. And it ends up in them having a fucking threesome. How did we get to this stage and point we're in? Are y'all proud of yourselves? Literally the worst idea I've ever heard ever. During the threesome, Olivia looks at the way that Dan looks at Vanessa. She realizes that Dan still has feelings for her, so she ends up breaking things off with him and goes to shoot her movie, and that's the end of Dan and Olivia. Soon enough, Dan tells Vanessa that he loves her, and she's not sure at first, but eventually she's like, yeah, I feel the same, and they get into a relationship. They're now boyfriend-girlfriend. I love saying that, boyfriend-girlfriend. <laughs> Anyways, Vanessa ends up going to Haiti, and they continue the relationship long distance. Back to Serena. Later, Serena's dad ends up coming back in to town with ulterior motives, but she can't see that because he's an asshole and obviously this is her dad. So the gang, and by that I mean Dan, Chuck, Blair, Nate, and Jenny, they work together and end up exposing Serena's dad. And you know, it's tough for Serena. Dan's there to pick up the pieces though. And they end up kissing and sleeping in the same bed. Jenny takes a picture of Dan and Serena sleeping in the same bed. They didn't actually, do, I mean they kiss, but they didn't do anything other than that. And she sends it into Gossip Girl and Gossip Girl posts it, which if you know who Gossip Girl is, it really don't make any damn sense. So Vanessa finds out and of course she breaks up with Dan and Serena and Nate were also dating at this point and they also break up. So now Serena's in Paris and Dan's like, I'm flying to Paris, France and I'm going to profess my feelings for this girl. Just as he's about to leave, Georgina shows up at his front door and she is with child. Yeah, 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 yeah. That stops him in his tracks because remember they hooked up. They hooked up. So season four begins and we find out that Dan had been spending all summer at the loft taking care of this kid. And he's been keeping it a secret from everybody. Nobody knows. But one day Vanessa walks into the loft and she sees him with the baby. And Georgina being the menace that she is tells Rufus and Lily. So Rufus freaks out and he requests that she gets a paternity test done because we know Georgina is a well renowned menace. She said that she already did one. And she also calls the doctor who confirmed from the paternity test and he confirms it. Apparently that's enough for Dan and he signs the kid's birth certificate. <laughs> so this whole time Dan has been taking care of Milo, his shared son, alleged shared son with Georgina because she's now on vacation. But then she comes back and she reveals that the whole thing was a lie. She orchestrated this whole thing because she's trying to hide from her ex's crazy wife or something. So yeah, Georgina just leaves with her baby and Dan is all obviously left with this hole in his heart because he thought he had a kid. He's been taking care of this kid alone. So so Vanessa is wary of this and she tries to get Dan to express his feelings to her. Dan's adamant that he's fine and to get away from having to talk about it, he goes to hang out with Serena. So before this whole ordeal happened with him and who he thought was his child, Milo, he obviously was gonna go to Paris and go try to get Serena back. So Dan does confess his feelings to Serena, but it is evident at this point that she isn't sure who she wants between Dan and Nate. So Dan's like, back to my backup plan, Vanessa, where you at? So we 
get to this point where Vanessa and Juliet are trying to ruin Serena's life and Dan finds out that Vanessa's involved with this and he breaks things off with her. Of course, with Juliet comes Colin. Colin and Serena start dating for a while. They break up. Serena's still torn between Nate and Dan. At this point, Juliet is working overtime. She's working nine to five to destroy Serena's life. Juliet's struck by Serena and everybody thinks that she's back to her old ways. She's sent to the Ostroff Center. Thankfully, Dan doesn't believe that she's back to her old ways. He gets her out of the Ostroff Center. Once she's out, her and Ben start dating. We know how that story goes. So now Dan and Blair are slowly catching feelings for each other. Serena isn't aware yet and Blair keeps on trying to deny that she has any feelings for Humphrey, even though they did kiss. But Serena is suspicious, so she confronts Dan and Blair. They outright deny it. It is clearly a situation where Dan is pining for Blair and she doesn't realize it. So then eventually Dan starts dating Ivy, who we know to be Charlie at this point. I'm just gonna call her Ivy anyways. But then she starts acting hella weird and starts being like, pretend that I'm Serena, call me Serena. And that is weird enough to freak anybody out, Dan included, so he stays away from her, rightfully so. So this is the end of season four, and Dan still is pining over Blair, but unfortunately, she is proposed to Louis, the evil guy from Monaco. So at the beginning of season five, we see that Dan is in the Hamptons, and he's trying to forget Blair, but then something, also just to be able to go to the Hamptons, for the summer must be fucking nice anyways something comes in the mail and he realizes that it's blair and louise invite to their wedding uh-oh poor lonely boy do you have anything to say they ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine anyways dan isn't sad for long because he goes home to brooklyn and he sees a check for ten thousand dollars in his name manifesting this for all my girlies so we found out that in the last season vanessa stole dan's manuscript that he was writing it's about to get published Published and it's already making bank. It does get a bit stressful. Dan tries to stop the release because there are some damning things in that book that he doesn't want everybody to find out. So Dan also finds out that Blair's pregnant and she doesn't know who the baby daddy is. Only Dan is aware of this at this point and Dan sort of makes a vow to himself to protect her during this stage. We end up finding out it's Louise's baby, by the way. So through some convincing, Dan is finally okay with his book being released and everybody's so happy for him. Finally creeping up the ladder, creeping his way up to the Upper East Side. That all ends when people read the sections that were inspired by them. Everybody's mad at Dan at this point, everybody's anti-Dan, but Serena has to pretend that she's not because she needs to get the book rights for her producer boss. So eventually the hype for Dan's book dies down. Dan is getting drunk with Chuck. He tries to ruin Blair's baby shower. And for once, Chuck is the mature one in the situation. He tries to stop it and he tells Dan, Blair is a grown woman, she has chosen Louis we, it's time to let go. So it's at this point that Blair finds out that Louis is low-key evil and she goes back to Chuck and she's like, could you possibly love another man's baby? And Chuck's like, girl, go be with your prince. So the stage Dan is still helping Blair through everything. So Blair and Louis' wedding day comes, it's a disaster. Louis tells Blair that he doesn't love her. <laughs> Serena tells Dan that she loves him. Dan leaves her unheard and goes to Blair and helps her escape this treacherous wedding. And at this point, Blair finally realizes her feelings for Dan and I can't lie they're a cute couple I know a lot of people hate dare but I think they're a cute couple and I love how much they had in common but anyways Blair finally realizes she has feelings for him but she can't act upon them because Louis is looking to financially destroy the Waldorfs for her embarrassing the family and leaving the wedding in front of the whole world but the dowry thing is sorted out her family doesn't have to pay it anymore and she no longer cares and Dan and her start seeing each other so Dan eventually tells Blair that he loves her. She doesn't say anything back. So what does this stupid ass bitch go and do? He cheats on her with Serena. And the evil thing is Serena knew he was vulnerable. So she seduced him. What a slimy little snake that one. And not just that, she recorded it jail time so dan finds out what serena did he goes off at her and at the end of season five he leaves to italy to start writing his second book it's now the beginning of the sixth season and dan and georgina have been in italy all summer she's been helping him write his book the sequel to inside they go back to manhattan trying to find serena because they need her for a specific reason we'll talk about later we find out that serena is missing she's gone missing where's she been serena 
that's another sequel I'll never tell. And she meant it, and she meant it too. <laughs> so while Dan and Georgina are on the hunt for Serena, so are Nate, Chuck, and Blair. And it's kind of like a little versus thing. Both teams want to get to her first. They end up finding her at a wedding at this beautiful home. Uh, she's with this older guy named Steven. A wedding is happening, so they think it's hers and Blair literally runs up and tries to stop it. But we find out it's actually a different couple and they just look like fools. Also in this episode, Blair and Dan talk for the first time since their breakup and Blair tells him that she chose Chuck and that it's always going to be Chuck. Dan is now actively trying to find a publisher for his second book and he wants to publish it in chapters. This time it's going to be a little bit more salacious because he's going to be using real names. So this makes it a huge expose against some of the most powerful people in New York. So nobody really wants to publish it. That is until Nate agrees to publish the first chapter in The Spectator. But then Dan goes and stabs him in the back and he gives the first chapter to Vanity Fair instead. Uh, side note, Rufus and Ivy are now hooking up, Ivy slash Charlie, and Dan finds out in a really unfortunate way. All I have to say is trauma. Ew. Ew. Both Serena and Dan have shared hookups with their respective parents. What the frick? So one thing I hate about Dan is that he doesn't know how to take no for an answer, so he is still actively chasing Blair, even after she told him that she doesn't want to see him anymore. So now they're at Cotillion, and for reasons that we'll speak about later, the sex tape that Serena filmed when Dan was cheating on Blair with her, it gets blasted at Cotillion. Blair is pissed, and Serena is also dumped by the man that she's dating at this time. So both single and sad, Dan and Serena start talking again. Sparks begin to fly once again, and things are going good, so they end up becoming boyfriend-girlfriend once again. Also, Dan tells Serena that it's always been you. It's always been you, Serena. Okay, sure, Daniel. Anyways, everything's forgiven. People have forgiven Daniel for his book, and everyone's good. Everyone's on good terms again. But then, Dan's stupid ass starts writing the Serena chapter, or should I say chapters, because he writes two. One good and one brutal so his dumbass releases the bad one and also he's like super rich now when he buys an apartment i think in the upper east side so obviously serena is so embarrassed by this whole ordeal and she decides that she's moving to la but not before dan gives her an envelope filled with a bunch of papers he tells serena to read it so she starts reading it and while she's on her way she finishes and she realizes why dan wanted her to read it so bad so she doesn't end up going to la serena finally realizes what dan's plan was from the beginning beginning and she realizes that he was gossip girl the whole time he is the mastermind behind this whole thing this nerdy ass brown eyed brown haired mousy motherfucker is gossip girl so serena forgives him and Everyone finds out that Dan has been Gossip Girl and literally all the friends forgive him so quickly, so quickly, even though he's been tormenting them for the past like five, six years. And they're like, oh well, have any of our lives really been ruined? Bro, he's been psychologically torturing you. This brings me to my biggest critique of Dan being Gossip Girl. The fact that he's put on this preachy, holier than thou, oh poor me attitude towards the people that are sort of natives of the Upper East Side for this whole time. And in the meanwhile, he has been actively trying to infiltrate them and become them. Every time that he scolded Serena for being conceited or privileged, he has been using his family, his friends, the people around him to so social climb so he could be just like her. But hey, you know, they're all horrid people at the end of the day. Dan is in the company of like scammers, liars, R-worders, kidnappers. They destroy careers, they ruin lives. So I guess like he's in good company. They're all the same now. Whoopee. So yeah, at the end of it all, Dorina's back together and they date and five years later, they eventually get married and that is, you know, the end of their Gossip Girl sort of universe as we really know it. So I will say Dan has some redeeming qualities. He's not bad to look at. He's smart, he's charming, he's funny. And I think a lot of these things are very important to Serena. She enjoys feeling like she's down to earth, even though she like she never has been. She is worth a 
billion, trillion, gazillion dollars. But yeah, I think those qualities are really important to her. So I think overall, Dan is good for Serena and just like knowing that they end up both being kind of bad, rich, hot, funny, cute, charming people together. Eh, yeah, I can see it. I think they make a good-ish match, but he is still not Serena's best boyfriend. So what do we give him out of 10? Dan gets a four. I feel like that's a big one. I feel like people are gonna either really like where I put him or are gonna severely disagree. So I'm so sorry in advance. So next we move on to Gabriel Edwards, who's played by none other than Canny, Ham I mean, Army Hammer. <laughs> so we meet him in season two and he runs into Serena and they get to talking and he realizes that they met at a bar one time when she was out with Georgina. <laughs> great start. They also find out that he is the boyfriend of Manhattan socialite Poppy Lifton. So this is the gay reel that Serena traveled to Spain with, like I talked about earlier, with his girlfriend Poppy Lifton. And she comes back from Spain, back to Manhattan, and uh-oh, she's a married woman. We find out that while they were on vacation, Poppy and Gabriel, they got into a fight and him and Serena got drunk and they decided that they were gonna get married. She gets back to Manhattan and talks to Blair's stepfather, Cyrus, the lawyer to see if she can annul this marriage. And in the meantime, her and Gabriel actually get to talking. They realize that they kind of like each other and they, you know, they play with the idea of actually starting to date and they do. But Serena starts to realize that he is very wishy-washy. He never plans dates. He's a flake. He's barely around. So she's like, G girl, something's going on. My spidey senses are tingling. Something is not right here. So her blur and Chuck go on a mission to find out what the fuck this man is hiding. Surprise, surprise, he is a scam and he is still dating Poppy. But like low key, Serena did steal Gabriel from her first, so she just stole him back. Anywho, Serena confronts Gabriel. She tells him what she saw and he's like, I'm not actually so interested in her. I'm just pretending to date her because he's starting this company and Poppy has all the contacts in the industry. And Serena's like, okay. Because Gabriel's business that he wants to start really is quite selfless and he wants to provide internet to people around the world who can't afford it. So Chuck and Blair eventually form this conversation with Gabriel and Poppy. And Poppy realizes during this confrontation that he is still dating Serena so she gives Gabriel an ultimatum she's like you either pick me and my contacts or you leave with Serena and he leaves with Serena sorry popster Serena decides that she will stick it out for Gabriel and Lily Serena's mom even invites Gabriel to this like investor party that she's hosting at the Vanderwoodson loft Chuck and Blair are still not convinced that this right here is a good man so they do a little bit more digging and then they realize that there is no way that he could have met Serena at the spot that he claims to have met her with Georgina because Blair had hired out that entire venue and obviously she planned the guest list to a T. We know how Blair Waldorf is. So there's no way that they could have been there and met there. So they tell Serena and Serena is strong. She's steadfast in her belief in Gabriel. Blair and Chuck still have not given up. They go to the source. They go find a Georgina and find out what actually happened on that night. And she tells them, we never went to that fucking bar. Gabriel's lying. Anyways, this wasn't even really that necessary because Serena sort of tricks Gabriel in casual conversation into admitting that he didn't know who Georgina was. He's like, mm, yeah, I remember Georgina and her fiery red hair. Bitch, that girl ain't a redhead. You know you don't know what that woman looks like. Why are you giving Serena descriptive factors? Why would you gamble with your alleged business like that? So Serena leaves him and Gabriel is sad. Although not really because we find out that yeah, he's still with Poppy. He has been with Poppy this whole time. So it turns out that, yeah, they were together this whole time. This whole thing was a scam. Down to the business that Gabriel claims to be running, down to them allegedly getting married in, in, in Spain. They planned this whole thing so that they could scam rich Upper East Siders into investing in their alleged companies and they just take the money and run away. And this is how Poppy Lifta lives her life. She is a scammer through and through. Loki, though, girl boss. Cause she's stealing from the rich and giving it to herself. Then Serena goes to Gabriel's hotel room to confront him. Surprise, surprise, Gabriel's gone. He left Poppy there and he also left with her half million dollars. In order to get him to come back, Serena pretends that she is pregnant with his baby. <laughs> and he eventually comes and he's like, 
I will give the money back as long as it doesn't go to Poppy. Gabriel reveals to Serena that Poppy was actually the mastermind behind everything and she was sort of blackmailing him into staying in cahoots with her. He feels like Poppy forced his hand. Anyways, he does express feelings for Serena. He tells her that his feelings were real. Serena's not having any of it. So yeah, that is the end of Gabriel Edwards. His ranking is... 8 out of 10. And I will say the fact that they were never really in a real relationship, it's just not significant enough for me to put him higher. Also, it's crazy the fact that he chose a life of scamming. Like, did you even try to go to school, bitch? He's supposed to be in high school. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> okay, so Max is introduced to us in season five of Gossip Girl. And he I forgot to change the slide behind me, as you can see. But just for the sake of clarity, we are talking about Max Harding now. He's introduced as Ivy Dickens, Ivy slash Charlie, her boyfriend. They're both working people with bigger dreams and yeah, they're living together. A little backstory though, Ivy, his girlfriend, is an aspiring actress and a couple seasons back she was in Manhattan. She was pretending to be Serena's cousin because Serena's aunt Carol, she doesn't want her real daughter to know that they come from money and she basically hired Ivy so she could play her daughter so she can get her inheritance and give it to Carol and then Carol pays Ivy a little bit of money. So Ivy's done with this job, she got her money and she's back in LA with her man. So in this season after Ivy's long done doing her job, Serena's in LA and she runs into Ivy. And at first Ivy's scared because she's like, oh my God, Max is here. He's gonna find out what I was doing in Manhattan. And then Serena's gonna find out that she's not actually Charlie. So she runs back to Max and she's like, Max, we've gotta get out of here. But eventually she just ends up breaking up with Max and continues to pretend that she's Charlie and she moves to Manhattan with Serena. Honestly, I'd do the same. At this point, what does she have to lose, really? So Ivy's in New York and she's back to living the life of the rich and the fabulous. And luckily for her though, Max is in New York because he has a pending new job as a chef in one of the restaurants there. While he's on the hunt for Ivy to give her back some of her stuff, cause he knows that she's not living in Manhattan, he runs into Serena. Why? Are we on this page? I'm so sorry. Should I start again? I'm not starting again. I'm sorry. This is Max's page. Um, who? is correct. <laughs> Runs into Serena while he's on the hunt for Ivy and Serena starts to, she starts to get feelings straight away as she does, which honestly I don't blame her because that's how fast Ivy catching feelings sometimes. So then them being the cousins that they are, they're talking about boys and Serena tells Ivy that she ran into this cute new boy. Obviously Ivy is not aware that it's Max. So she tells Serena to go for it. So she does. And also Max finds out Ivy's dirty little secret that she has been pretending to be Serena's cousin. He finds out on gossip. Some girl. Max decides to confront Ivy in the Vanderwoodsen penthouse, but this girl is so quick thinking. She's so quick on her feet and she says that she has always been Charlotte Rhodes, so Charlie. Her name was never Ivy. Her mom made her pretend to be Ivy because the Rhodes name had ruined her and so many people would use her, so she didn't want her daughter to go through the same thing, so Charlotte Rhodes had to become Ivy Dickens. She also tells him that it's over between them and she literally gives him 50 grand to leave New York. <laughs> what the fuck? So Max is about to take the money and go, but as he's on the way out from the Vanda Woodson penthouse, he sees a family photo and Carol is there with Ivy slash Charlotte next to her. And Max is like, this woman looks familiar. And then he realizes that he does know her. She used to work with Ivy in a play that they did together. So he knows for a fact that this isn't the real Charlotte Rose and he confronts Ivy again. She still doesn't admit to anything though. And she's just like, be patient. I can get you a lot more money. If if this were me, I would take the 50 grand and go. Why are you looking for trouble at this point? I swear people go into Manhattan and worms start eating their brains and they start making dumb decisions. When I say that, I mean in the show, obviously not in real life. So then now Max and Serena are dating each other and he becomes like low-key evil all of a sudden. He tells Ivy that he now wants <laughs> half a million dollars, which is so crazy because they were poor as hell when they were living in LA and 50 grand would have changed his life. So Max and Serena are still dating and he even offers to make Serena's grandmother, Cece, a cake for her birthday. But he's also getting impatient. He wants the money. And Ivy's just getting really stressed out by this situation because it's harder than she thought to get that amount of money. So now Ivy's trying to sabotage Max and Serena's relationship so she doesn't have to interact with them anymore. So Max finds out what Ivy's trying to do and he confronts her the next day about it. But then Serena finds out that Ivy and Max used to date. Serena confronts him about it. And Max is like, Ivy's a scammer. She's lying to all of you. But obviously Ivy continues to deny it. In addition to that, 
Carol is here witnessing this whole thing and she says, I'm literally her mother, this is my daughter. And obviously the Vander Woodsons, they take her word for it because who are you gonna believe? Your relative that you've known your whole life or some random guy? He didn't stand a chance. I don't know why he even tried to be honest. Just take the 50 grand and leave. Like, why do you care? So now it's obvious that it's the end of Serena and Max's relationship, yet he still doesn't quit. He's not leaving Manhattan until he exposes Ivy. So in an attempt to do this, he goes to Nate at The Spectator, trying to get him to hear him out on the story about Ivy and her faking all this shit. But Nate tells him to F off. So Max leaves. On his way out of The Spectator, he runs into Trip. So we haven't really talked about Trip yet, but he does eventually date Serena in the future, which we will get to soon. So Trip pays Max to do something. We'll talk about that later. He does it and Max is good. He finally has his money and he leaves Manhattan. And that is the last we hear from Max Harding. What do I rate him out of 10, you ask? Five. Overall, he's cute and he was really nice to Serena, even if he was also using the opportunity to expose Ivy. Inherently, that isn't a bad thing. He should have just counted his blessings and taken the money, but I think he's right in the middle. He is sort of a chaotic neutral. He could be better. He could also be worse. And now that I'm looking at this ranking, I feel as though we could swap these two. I do, I really do. However, we're gonna leave it as it is because I've already made this presentation and I'm already filming. Look at that face. Nate Archibald's beautiful man. Face card doesn't decline. No thoughts, head empty, and he's a little bit of a slag. He's a little bit of a slag, but there's nothing wrong with that. Nate is obviously one of the OGs in Gossip Girl. He comes from a very powerful family, more so on his mother's side, and he's kind of fatherless. Oh, that. In, no. in, in the sense that. So we meet Nate in season one, and he's dating Blair, but all of a sudden, Serena is back from wherever the hell she ran off to for like a year. And as soon as he hears Serena's name, literally while him and Blair are about to do the nasty, he gets up and he's like, Serena, Serena, I have to find her. And then he <laughs> leaves Blair on the bed by herself. Bear in mind that before Serena left to go to boarding school, he cheated on Blair with her and he's still thirsting over her. Be fucking for real. So Nate does eventually tell Blair that he cheated on her with Serena about a year earlier. You know, she loves him, she forgives him. She has a whole like 20 year plan for them together. However, Serena still wants to talk to Nate to discuss what happened. Nate's like, no, you gotta go. You've, you've gotta go. You've gotta to go because he doesn't want Blair to get upset. Psych. They eventually end up meeting with Serena anyways and they're at this event. They plan to go up to a fucking bedroom so they can speak. You literally couldn't choose anywhere else. So they plan to meet there but before Nate can get to Serena, Blair drags him and takes him to the room and then she sees Serena there. She wasn't expecting that obviously so she runs away pissed as hell. Blair's so mad that she goes and tells Dan that Serena was planning to sleep with Nate when we know that's not what they were trying to do. They were just trying to talk but still they could have gone about it in a way better way. Eventually, Nate tells her that you can either let this relationship go or you can forgive me. And she says, I'll forgive you. And they stay together. This is the point in the show where we're introduced to Carter Basin and he scams Nate out of, was it? $10,000 and in an attempt to pay back this gambling debt that he now owes because of Carter, he goes into his trust fund and he finds that there's nothing there. It's been completely drained. And he calls, I think his financial advisor or something. And he was like, dude, where's my money? There was at least 200 grand in here the other week. Must be nice. And the financial advisor was like, I thought you knew your dad drained that account ages ago, babes. Get with the program. So thankfully the money is put back at some point, but now it's really suspicious. So Nate decides to raid his dad's like office or something. He finds Coke. <laughs> Later he goes to a masquerade ball where he thinks that Serena is Jenny. So, so he accidentally tells Dan's sister that he loves her, thinking he was telling Serena that he loves her. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. That's crazy. While still in a relationship with Blair the whole time. Babe, just break up with her. Break up with her and date Serena like you clearly want to, dude. Anyways, karma comes to bite him in the ass when Nate's mom finds some cocaine in the house. And she's like, Nate, what is this? And he takes the fall for his father because obviously it's his dad's cocaine. And Nate is fine doing this because Howard, his dad, he promises not to do it again. But then Nate catches him buying cocaine again. He's like, dad, what the fuck? He is high at this point. Nate's dad is high. So he punches him in the face. The police is called and he gets arrested. 
and his charges are not only related to drugs, but he gets charged with embezzlement. Embezzle? Embezzle? Nate finally comes to his senses and he finally breaks up with Blair because he obviously does not feel the same way for her that she does for him. And she deserves better. Like she deserves someone who actually likes her, bitch. So at this point, Blair and Chuck start seeing each other secretly though. Nobody knows, not even Nate. He all of a sudden wants her back because obviously like he's not sure why, but she's a little bit happier. This man cannot make up his mind. So yeah, he's on an attempt to get her back. Nate and Chuck go head to head trying to be the victor. They keep going back and forth or sabotaging each other eventually just ends up with Nate finding out that Blair and Chuck dated and Nate being extremely pissed with Chuck because obviously he had her first where it's a bro code blah 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 and now Blair is with neither of them so at this point Nate starts dating <sighs> Vanessa. <laughs> and now at this point, Nate's dad flees the country so he can avoid his charges. Obviously, lots is going on for Nate. So Vanessa realizes that and she's like, I don't think you're ready for me right now. So they break up. It's the end of season one. Him and Serena are now back on good terms. But season two is so fucking messy for Nate. So they begin the season in the Hamptons and Nate and Serena are pretending to date so that people can get off Serena's back, but also so that he can have a secret affair with a married woman. It turns out that this woman, I think her name's Catherine, she is married to Blair's new boyfriend's father. This is so messy and it gets messier when later in the season you realize that Marcus is literally sleeping with his stepmother. When does it end? The shock, the horror. But I ate it up. So Nate obviously is in a horrendous financial situation with his dad being on the run for fraud and embezzlement. And I believe at this point the Vanderbilt, so Nate's mom's family had cut her off because I don't think they ever liked Howard. Anyways, Nate ends up having to exchange sex for money so he can keep his family afloat. And that's so fucking sad that a 15, 16 year old feels like he has to do this he attempts to break up with Catherine so we can start seeing Vanessa. But this woman, Catherine, is controlling as hell. And she confronts Vanessa and she's like, if you start seeing Nate, I'm going to reveal to the public where his father's hiding. So in a moment of desperation, Vanessa consults Blair for help. So Blair finds out about the situation. And then she also finds out about the whole thing with Marcus and Catherine having an affair, even though they're literally... Ugh. Eventually the whole thing is blown and Catherine goes back to England, thank God. So at this point, Dan and Nate become friends and Dan finds out about his situation, how he's literally squatting at his old house that had been seized because they took everything from this family because of what his dad did. So Dan asks Rufus, his dad, if he can stay at the loft. Nate resists the first, but he ends up moving in with the Humphreys and it's honestly so cute and he's so meek and like quite humble. So he really gets along with the Humphreys family. However, this doesn't last long because Nate and Dan's sister, Jenny, they start to get close to each other and they kiss. Dan finds out, punches Nate, and Nate moves out of the loft. Now at this point, Nate's dad's back in town and he wants them all to be a happy family of three again. So Nate's dad wants to meet Nate and his mom so they can talk about potentially moving away with him. However, the FBI like intercepts and doesn't let Nate go because apparently Howard was planning to kidnap Nate and his mother and hold them for ransom, collect the ransom money, and then let them go. Huh? His dad just ends up going back to prison. It is now nighttime and I've had to change the settings on my TV. It looks so dark in real life, but if I put the TV at its normal settings, it would blind you. So here's to hoping that it looks normal on your screen right now. So before Nate and Vanessa got together, Nate sent a letter to Jenny professing his feelings for her. She never got it, but now Vanessa is dating Nate and she finds this letter. She likes Nate, she doesn't want Jenny to find it. So she keeps it, she holds it, she keeps it to herself and she tries to make sure that Jenny never reads it. Within this season though, Nate and Blair eventually get back together and they break up again. So then beginning of season three, Nate is dating Brie Buckley. Remember we talked about them. During this season, Nate also dates Jenny, which literally one of the worst pairings in Gossip Girl history. The vibes aren't there. I'm so sorry, the vibes aren't there. Also the fact that she's Dan's little sister, it just, I know it's fine. Like it's one of the only age appropriate relationships in this whole entire show. It just doesn't sit right with me. It just doesn't. Obviously like it doesn't fit the plot very well, but I guess they had to make Nate date every main female character in this show. So Nate and Serena don't really get together in this season until towards the end. This is when we find out that Serena's dad, William, 
is evil, he essentially faked her mom's cancer diagnosis just so he could be around her, just so he could steal her from Rufus. The girl's just really going through it right now. Nate is really helping her emotionally during this time, and during this process, they rekindle their romance, and it's really cute. However, ugh, Dan is always just peeking around the corner, ready to cause some mess. While Nate and Serena are back together, Serena kisses Dan. Nate does end up forgiving her for it, but Serena ends up breaking up with him because she kind of just needs to focus on herself right now, which honestly understandable. I just don't know why she had to kiss Dan to figure that out. So that was the end of season three. Now we get to season four and we realize that in order to get over Serena, Nate has been using Chuck's little black book full of women and he's just been, you know, he's been fucking and sucking his <laughs> way around men. I find it funny that it seems like the only way that men are able to get over Serena in this show is to like, get horn. So this is a season once again of Juliet and Ben's nonsense. Juliet and Nate kind of start liking each other a little bit. Obviously Juliet is trying to get in his good graces because duh, she's trying to ruin Serena's life. Nate finds out that she's a dodgy character, blah blah blah. Juliet is you know, finally out of the picture regarding Nate, and now his mind is right back where Serena is. However, now Dan is also single, and of course, as soon as they're single, it's right back to Serena. She's always the default, of course, especially, especially for Dan. Actually, no, Dan also has Vanessa. So now that Nate and Dan are both interested in Serena again, they decide that they're each gonna invite her on a date, and whoever she picks afterwards, the other man just has to be okay with. And while Juliet might not be in Nate's life anymore, she's still around. So Juliet, Jenny, and Vanessa, the unemployed trio, they are still actively trying to ruin Serena's life for one reason or another. They steal her phone or her SIM card or something like that, and Serena doesn't get the text where both Nate and Dan ask her out. They get the text. So they text Dan and Nate back and agree to both dates. This is such a fucking stupid plot line. <laughs> there was a masquerade ball that's hosted by Chuck. Juliet and Jenny, the two blondes who are conspiring with Vanessa against Serena, they both act as though they're Serena. One kisses Nate, the other kisses Dan. So when Nate sees Serena again, she tells him that she never kissed him and he doesn't believe her. He's like, oh, this is just like you, Serena. I'm not, I'm not gonna be dragged back into your bullshit. Nate and Serena just remain friends for this season. He actually starts dating this gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful woman called Raina Thorpe. Unfortunately for her, her dad is literally evil. His name's Russell Thorpe and he freaking kidnaps Blair. They're so beautiful together. But after the whole thing with Raina's dad, she decides she's gonna move back to Chicago, which is where she's originally from. Nate is now single. It's the end of season four and he's traveling the world with Chuck. So Lord knows, Lord knows what he's gonna get up to in between seasons four and five. At the beginning of season five, Nate and Chuck have ended up in LA after a summer of traveling around the world, which is so incredible. That sounds so nice. Nate comes across this lady who I dislike so strongly. I'm so sorry. She's one of the worst characters in Gossip Girl history. I'm talking about Diana Payne. Why does she sound like that? She offers Nate a job at The Spectator and we do eventually find out that Nate's grandfather, William, he, is his name William? Are there two old men named William in this show? Do you have anything to say to the class? So yeah, we do find out that Nate's grandfather orchestrated this whole thing and he owned The Spectator this entire time. But anyways, for the time being, Nate thinks that he was just randomly offered this job by this lady called Diana Payne. So he starts working at The Spectator. During this season, Ivy slash Charlie, she's also around and her and Nate start dating. Although if you remember though, Ivy starts acting really strange and she she's like, call me Serena. I want to be Serena, 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 Serena. He ends up getting weirded out and they break things off. So at this point, the the real Charlotte Rhodes comes into town and she introduces herself as Lola. So we're gonna call her Lola. Actually, should we call her Charlie? No. Oh my God, Charlie and Lola. Those are her two nicknames. So yeah, Nate and Charlie slash Lola start dating. During the season, Nate and Serena are also working together because she has a job at The Spectator now. And this is the season where Serena is also gossip girl for a little while and she's such, such a little diva, such a menace <laughs> in this season. So yeah, he ends up firing Serena, but the rest of the season, for the most part, they remain friends. So I really don't even need to get into season six because Nate and Serena are friends throughout, really. There's no more more dating like when he broke up with her for the last time he really meant it also in this season 
He's dating Sage, Steven Spence's annoying ass fucking daughter. Obviously, we know that Sage leaked Serena and Dan's sex tape to the whole of Cotillion. We spoke about that earlier. As a result, Nate breaks up with Sage, and that's really all we know for Nate's dating history through the show, if I'm remembering correctly. But obviously, now he's running The Spectator. He's doing so good for himself. I really love that Nate has a lovely, happy ending. After the five years, we can see that Nate is an uber important. He's the mayor or something and he has a private jet and the spectator's huge which is really lovely what a wholesome ending i love that for him fuck private jets but if one person's gonna have a private jet let it be nate you know that is it for nate as y'all can tell by the way i described him yes he has his downfalls but at the end of the day this is my man right here this is my man, and I'm a stick beside him. Take a guess at what his ranking is from one through 10. I'll let you have a little guess. Ta-da! He's number one. I think Nate deserves to be number one spot. For the majority of his character arcs in each season, he had a good heart. He cheated on some of his girlfriends, yes, but compared to what so many of these men have done, it's not, it's just not comparable. Any hoozles. Now we are moving on to Steven Spence. He meets Serena during her Sabrina era. He is old, geriatric, and he's the father of a pest. That pest being Sage. I know she's a high schooler, but I hate that girl down. Like, shut up and go to school. Like, for real. If I were Serena and I was dating Steven, my god, I would literally pretend that girl didn't exist. So yeah, we've been through this. I'll just quickly whiz through it. We meet Steven in season six. He's known Serena as Sabrina. The whole gang, including Georgina, going to hunt to find her. They find her at a house. They think she's getting married. It turns out she's just with Steven. She didn't tell Steven about her past. She was obviously running away from it. But Serena tells Steven the truth, and they decide that they're going to keep things going. He moves with her to New York, which is really cute. So in the beginning of the season, we do meet Sage, and she's just incredibly bratty so at a stage steven says to serena i think we should break up because i need to focus on my bratty daughter like she's just causing too much havoc i need to focus on her but serena's like no i can get along with sage and also there's like a five year age gap between them so like it shouldn't be that hard serena really does try to get along with her she ends up getting sage a spot at a fashion show it wasn't confirmed at first but serena was so sure that she could do it and blair ends up agreeing to it but as we know she's walking during the fashion show and and she strips out of the dress uh, that is a Waldorf design, causing just insane havoc during this fashion show. So Steven's very much aware that Serena didn't have anything to do with this, that it was just Sage, so they're still going strong. And what gets me during this period of time is Serena's dating Steven, Nate's dating Sage. So Serena's ex-boyfriend is now her potential son-in-law. How did we get here? How did we get here? <laughs> so not only that crazy shit, but later Serena, Steven, Sage, and Nate, the quad, they're at an event and there's a Gossip Girl blast that goes out that says that Lily, Serena's mom, hooked up with Steven back in the day. My mind really can't comprehend this. We're really just stretching and twisting and turning and trying to find out the, the ways we can make these relationships as weird as possible. So now, Steven's stupid ass, after like a maximum of five months of seeing Serena, he buys a ring for her. Obviously, Serena isn't supposed to be aware of it yet, but she finds out. She's so excited about this because it's very clear throughout the show that Serena is very much a hopeless romantic and it's very much to her detriment a lot of the time. So she tells Blair all excited about this, but Blair, she's like, Serena, are you sure this is a good idea? But Serena, obviously, like, she tries to pay her no mind. And Blair, instead of communicating with her best friend, teams up with Sage and tries to sabotage this relationship. Sage, unfortunately, learns that Dan and Serena have a sex tape from back when Blair and Dan were dating and Dan cheated on her with Serena. So remember, Serena filmed that whole thing because she's a fucking idiot. Georgina has a copy of it. Sage overhears and she steals her phone, broadcasts the sex tape onto the huge screen at Cotillion. And this dumbass man right here, he sees the sex tape and of course it's Serena's fault. So he breaks up with Serena. However, on the other hand, Serena created this. The whole thing, it was bred out of pure evil. That's such an insane thing to do, both to the guy that you used to date and your best friend. So yeah, this is her karma. Anyways, you and I both know that when Steven and Serena break up, 
she gets back with Dan for the thousandth and last time, woo! But unfortunately, this isn't the end of Serena, Stephen and Serena, because during Thanksgiving, Serena is shopping and then she runs into Sage and Stephen doing their own Thanksgiving shopping. However, it is not a run-in because Sage and Blair have now conspired to get Serena and, uh, and Stephen back together. She ends up inviting them to Thanksgiving and Stephen genuinely thinks that he's gonna get back with Serena but like that's not happening she is most definitely with Dan now so time passes Dan finally releases the bad Serena chapter the one where he had a choice between a good and bad one he chooses to release the bad one once he releases it Serena breaks up with Dan which makes sense obviously she ends up getting back with Dan but in between those two times <laughs> Serena attempts to call Steven and it goes to voicemail and you can see that he doesn't answer the phone while he's reading the Serena chapter it's so funny like that is so funny she was dead down bad he didn't pick up that's so crazy at his big age at his old geriatric ass age he didn't pick up for serena vanderwoodson that's wild dan is a menace so yeah that is the end of Serena. What is he rated? He is rated six because he's better than Aaron, but he is not better than Max, in my opinion. So who is gonna fill that 10th spot? Ooh, I'm seething, I'm seething. Trip Vanderbilt. If you really, really think about it, this man has like four, five cases of attempted murder, and he has one case of murder, murder. This man is insane. So we meet this man, unfortunately, in season two. He's Nate's older cousin, and he's a budding politician. So he's married to this girl named Maureen, who's kind of also a girl boss. Love that for her. Love the positive female figures in this show. He's married to Maureen. He runs for congressman. He wins, but then we realize that he doesn't win off his own merit. He wins because Maureen is like extremely manipulative, and she like concocted this whole situation so that her husband could win. And you know what? Tripp is so disgusted by this. He is so disgusted by this because it is just not in his nature to cheat, except when it comes to his wife. Tripp doesn't get a divorce. Instead, he's no longer down with Maureen and he goes to start an affair with Serena. And Maureen's like, okay, this is what married people do. That's fine, we can keep this strictly business. You can do what you wanna do. I'll do what I wanna do. And we can maintain this like polished family unit from the outside looking in. This man is so dumb. Like then again, so with Serena because why are you dating a married man Serena she could literally have anybody in the entire world shit she could have me but no she chose that disgusting ugly 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 man so Tripp and Serena are now at a little cabin they chose to make a little getaway to his cabin in the woods cabin in the woods is a really good movie by the way go watch it right now it's so good and it subverts your expectations Go watch it. So while they're at this getaway, Trip doesn't even tell Serena about the deal he had with Maureen. But thankfully, while Trip's not there, Maureen drops by the cabin and she explains it to Serena. Thankfully, this girl finally comes to her senses and she wants to break things off with Trip. So they're on their way to Manhattan now, and Trip is still talking about the situation. Serena is mad as hell and she's not having any of it. Anyways, he's not really paying attention, and then he sees animals on the road, he swerves so that he can avoid hitting them but they get into a car accident and Tripp wakes up first instead of this man to call for an ambulance he moves Serena to the driver's side seat so it looks like she was the one that was driving this girl is in she's in horrible shape Tripp moves her and then just runs away it's insane <laughs> so this is one of the craziest plot lines in this story because I don't know what it is some insane magical nepotism but Tripp doesn't face any consequences for this when Nate finds out what happened he wants to go to the police but then Maureen tells him that the police aren't gonna believe him because Maureen is going to corroborate his story that he was with her that entire night and also their grandfather has really close connections to like all the cops or whatever in Manhattan so nobody's gonna believe them no one's gonna take this seriously and this whole thing is so insane because if Tripp can do that to Serena what's he gonna do to you that he like no longer cares for Maureen yet you're still writing for this man that is crazy I just think she just really wants to be first lady and then be president and she chose to barnacle onto the sinking ship that is trip so that sucks for her anywho there's nothing that Nate can really do about the situation because the Vanderbilts are so powerful so all I can really do is punch trip and tell him to 
never go near Serena again. Anyways, we don't really see him again till season five where he comes back to cause more havoc. So now William, the grandfather, is very obviously pitting Nate and Trip against each other. And Trip is jealous as hell because Nate is now becoming the golden boy of the Vanderbilt family. So this is the part that I talked about earlier where Max, remember the guy that was trying to take down Ivy? He went to talk to Nate at the Spectator to get Nate to try to listen to him. Run a story. Nate didn't pay him any mind. So on his way out of the Spectator building, he runs into Trip. Yeah, Trip pays him to drain the brake fluid, the brake fluid from Nate's car. What is this bitch's, what is his problem? What is your problem? How did we get here? You're trying to kill your cousin because granddaddy doesn't like you as much anymore? Get it together, babes. So if we remember correctly, Max, he didn't know when to leave, but the boy has sense. He didn't actually do it and he takes Trip's money and he leaves town, which honestly good for him. He also had like a pretty good ending. So unfortunately, Trip finds out that Max took his money and skipped town. So he drains the brake fluid from Nate's car instead. But the thing is, this car that was ordered for Nate, Chuck and Blair get into it instead. And they get into a horrible, horrible car crash. This car crash almost kills Chuck and Blair and it actually kills their unborn baby. Thankfully, Trip eventually gets caught and he's like, oh, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. I just want them to get banged up. Bitch, are you crazy? So you mess with their car. Babe, next time just buy a scary mask and scare them or something. What is wrong with this man? So the show hints that Tripp's life is ruined after this and I really, really hope that means jail time. They really insinuated it, but they never showed it. So in my head, Tripp is in jail. We never see this man again, thank the Lord. So what do you think this bitch's rating out of 10 is? Oh, my bad. 10. So yeah, this is the final ranking. Hey, kitty. Where? What? Hi. <laughs> so there we have it. Nate is the winner. Personally, I think Serena's best boyfriend was Nate. I do not think it was Dan to any extent, but that's just me. Tell me who your number one pick is in the comments below and tell me why. If you guys want more videos like this, please tell me in the comments below because I would absolutely love to do something like this again. I am going to start rewatching Awkward. You know that MTV show? I loved it way back in the day and I think it's really, I, it's really problematic and really iconic and I would love to do a little Awkward series. Or if you want me to do another Gossip Girl related video, let me know too. The guys that Blair dated would be really, really interesting because they're all fucking insane thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment below if you want to share this video with your friends and yeah if you made it this far don't forget to follow me on my social medias they will be at the end of the video and in the description below so yeah that's it bye jumping out of whip shit cold Watching my stepgram froze. Most my day spent long. Same my bro, he knows. Ay, gotta pay dues. Fucking in much. Where has she been, Serena? That's another secret I'll never tell. You know you love me. XO, XO. Gossip girl. <laughs> oh, you can finally see my cat. Oh. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> is it yummy relax brother my brother in christ is just strange please